remind me what we have seen recently. Um, This is to be, again, this is magnetostatics. So, for example, steady current. In particular, d rho dt equals zero. And parallel, uh, curve of E is zero, and divergence of E So you can, we use this uh, uh, using Gauss's theorem to solve for the electric field when there is uh, symmetry. So you can expect this to be used as well if there is symmetry to sol solve for the magnetic field. Okay. The other feature I mentioned is divergence of E is the charge density, divergence of B would have been the magnetic charge density. So this just shows that there's no magnetic, net magnetic charge. Magnet or magnetic phenomena comes with equal amounts of plus and minus. They may be separated in some sense, in a, like in a dipole moment kind of. It's, it's not quite that. It's a current loop is what it is. But there's no net charge. We'll, we'll talk about the origins of uh, the magnetic field as in what, you know, at least classically, what is the fundamental object that creates the magnetic field, like the charge uh, for uh, electric field. Okay, so we can use this to, uh, as I mentioned, um, to compute the magnetic field when there is a high case of symmetry. So let's, I, I may have, done this. So I'm going to take and integrate it over an area. So I have some area. I think I did it, but it's still important to do it. Um, and suppose you have magnetic field threading it. This, I'll, I'll label all of this, but this is dot dA. Now, what does dA? Remember, dA is the area element that is perpendicular to the surface. So, this is it is perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so you're taking the curl of B and integrating <coughs> along the surface, well, then you have to do it with the other side as well. And what I have shown here is J, the arrows. J dot dA, as you know, is nothing but the current enclosed. Th that actually follows, um, as we have seen, from the continuity equation, uh, again, it doesn't. So let me let me write this as the statement I want to write, uh, which is mu naught i n closed. So this is my j. Let me move it out of there. But let's again very quickly say, see where this comes from. So d rho. This is the continuity equation. Uh, equals minus divergence of j. And so I do uh, well, d rho dt d tau. I do this on both sides. And using divergence theorem, I get 
J dot dA. Um, and I can, I can pull this out, so, and then it becomes a proper derivative because all of space has been integrated. So this is nothing but in a certain volume. This is being integrated in some sort of a four volume. I'm oh, sorry, not four, three volume. Again, a little relativity happy there. So any three-dimensional surface, and that's equal to. So you can see this is the current because if the current flows out, charge decreases. Current flows in, so this is the current. I write it too, I wrote it too compactly, so let me do. Well, I can do another thing and then I'll box it. Uh, this, using Stokes' theorem, I can write it as, and this is b dot dl, but a closed loop is mu zero, I enclosed. So maybe I can even draw a better diagram now. Suppose you have, you're integrating B, okay, and let me just do, And, and this is, of course, dl, and you could have b. Sometimes it can point outward. It doesn't have to. Yeah, and these are b. So if you take the combination of b dot dl and integrate it along the outside loop, indeed, it gives you the net current flowing through this cross-sectional area. In the time-independent case, that also means, these are all very powerful results, it, you know, this boundary shares many surfaces. It could be a thin film of soap or an exaggerated surface. It doesn't matter what surface it is. Or it could have a dip, sort of uh, two-dimensional surface like this. So one boundary is shared by many surfaces, many abstract mathematical surfaces. If this is the boundary b dot dl that you're integrating over, this could be the surface. That's the obvious simple sur surface. If I ask you to integrate over something, this is probably the surface you would choose. But then, there are many surfaces for which this outer rim is the boundary. There could be you know, a surface like this. Inward, well, in fact, the sink. Yeah, so, but regardless of what it is, in the, in the magnetostatic case, you would get that b dot dl, the integral, is mu naught times the enclosed current. This is called Ampere's law. So this is all by way of uh, recall. So the, you know, we've seen this result before. So a lot of problems become well if there is high amount of symmetry. And I suppose today's job is to do exactly that. Today's job is the magnetic version of Gauss's law or Ampere's law, yeah, applications of it. So suppose you have, again, like I said, we need a high degree of symmetry. And I need a, not a Gaussian loop, but an Amperian loop, if you will. So what I'm going to do is, 
constant radius, huh? Despite how I've shown. And I'm going to do B dot DL. And if it's a constant radius away, just by, uh, and I can call this S, it doesn't matter what it is, but S equals constant. And then I'm going to do integral. And I'm going to integrate along, well, DL. DL is what? S d phi phi hat. Right? So B dot DL. For one thing, it is mu 0 times this i. On the other hand, it is B, the phi component of B, times S d phi equals mu 0 i. Um, none of this is phi dependent because the magnitude should be constant. And so I would get that B phi equals mu 0 i over 2 pi s. We struggled last time to compute this. We did an infinite integral. But that's the whole point. Just like Gauss's law, Ampere's loop gives you the magnetic field very quickly. So if you have a current carrying wire, the magnetic field, at least the phi component of the magnetic field is just constant magnitude that falls off as 1 over s. Now, I need a little bit work, but I'm going to write this very boldly as if because I know the answer. Now, how can, why is it that I cannot immediately jump from here to here? Good, what's that? There could be other components, yeah. So, uh, this is, the phi component matches. We know it has to be correct due to Ampere's law. Now, could there be a radial or S component? Imagine if you stand upside down, if there's an S component, let's say the S component points outward. That, that means if you stand upside down and look at it, the S component points inward. Because if you replace k with, uh, or i with negative i in the integral, the magnetic field has to reverse sign. But that's unphysical. Just because you stand upside down and watch the wire doesn't mean the direction of the magnetic field changes sign. Easy to say, but think it through. So that way, there's no s component. Yeah? Could there be a z component? It's a constant current in the z direction. There's no z component because it's uh, dl cross r, so it's perpendicular to dl. Yeah? You will see that in, in other contexts. So very quickly, if you realize from symmetry, symmetry argument that the magnetic field is pointing along the phi hat direction, then just like, again, Gauss's law, the result just falls. Okay. Let's do another simple problem. And this is a worked out example, but still much to be learned from it. I'm trying to, so this is example 5.8, so it is in the x direction. Okay. So you have example 5.8. You have current vector that is constant. And the question is, find the magnetic field. 
for the moment, we'll worry about the current uh, magnetic field above. The, so this current exists in the in all of the xy plane. Okay. So this current, k, current well, surface current is k in the x hat direction. Uh, technically, what should I say? It is restricted to the you know, that's the surface. And z equals zero to the x y plane. We won't have it. We won't worry about this. Okay. So let's put this in context. Let's write uh, Biot-Savart's law for pi. Not that we'll be using Biot-Savart's law, mind you. K cross dA prime. So the prime, the, where, where the, this is entirely prime. So th this is prime. Yeah? X hat prime, if you will, because we're integrating over the sources. This one contains prime. Okay, now let's look at uh, which way the current uh, magnetic field can point and cannot point. Can it point in the x direction? Yeah. It's perpendicular to x direction. So we know that bx is equal to 0. And now, I'm going to write BZ is equal to zero, and you're going to tell me why. The components cancel. It is true that the components will cancel if you write out the integral. Fine, but that's not the argument. I mean, then we have to write out the integral and show that the components cancel. Let's say it points upward. Now you turn around and stand. K has become minus K. All of a sudden, you think it points downward? So when we're talking about the observer, we're saying the observer switches direction. Yeah, see, if K becomes minus K, mm -hmm. B becomes minus B. Yeah. So current flowing in the positive X direction, mm -hmm. let's say, the magnetic field is that way. That means if the current is flowing in the minus x direction, B has to point this way. But physically, suppose you, you should, current, current is flowing. This is my x-axis. So current is flowing this way, right? And I said, great, my magnetic field points this way. Great, I made, did a measurement. Now I'm going to set my you know, coordinate system this way, and that's my x-axis. So the current is point, pointing that way. Uh, That's still, a, yeah, nothing has changed. I just yeah. changed around. Yeah. yeah? So that cannot happen. It's a clever argument, right? And Griffith actually states it very well in the book. So I, I'm just stating it without writing on the board. Uh, anytime you, know, you go through your notes and go, where did that come from? Well, visit the notes. Yeah. Or, or watch the video. So then. We know that what we need is what? Oh, it's not by, but rather not by something, but the y component of b. Correct? So we need an ampere and loop. Unlike, unlike uh, Gauss's law, where you need a pillbox, here, what we need is a loop. So we'll go this way, come down below the plane, and go this way. And I'm not very good at drawing. This is what the xy plane looks like. Above the xy plane, below the xy plane. And I'm going to do a b dot dl through this loop. Again, 
if you use these Gauss's law or Ampere's law and integrate, you're doing something wrong. So let me say this length is some, some length A. So my contribution is only from, actually in this case I don't need to do it because the magnetic field in the perpendicular direction is zero anyway. Yeah? So these two sides are the same thing. Uh, just by symmetry, B, if B, uh, BY points in this direction, over here, over below, it has to point in the other direction. So the magnitude is the same. So then I get B times 2 times B times A, the length of the loop. B times A, B times A, equals mu 0, K times A. So here, let me show you also that A goes away because we picked an arbitrary loop of length A, it should depend on A, and so I get B, and here there's some effort, so over two, but let me write this vectorially. When Z is greater than zero, B is equal to, and tell me why I'm doing this, minus mu zero, K over 2 y hat when c is less than 0 it should be it should be clear from the diagram but not so clear why did I draw draw the loop this way why didn't I draw draw the loop the other way around Hidden all the subtleties there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so it's a sleight of hands, right? Yeah, I know the answer, so let's write it down. And I know we've done something similar before. No, no, no. So, what I'm going to do, first of all, uh, if this is my y axis, the current is flowing out this way. So using Stokes' theorem, if I do pick a loop, for the right-hand side to be positive, I do need to go this way. So you get the direction of the loop. Yeah? OK. Now over here, the contribution is 0, because there's no z component. So all I'm worried about is these two sides of length A. I know the magnitude, if this is exactly the same height above and below, the magnitude of the magnetic field here is the same as the magnitude of the magnetic field there. Hence, just B. Now, if B pointed in this direction above and then B pointed in this direction below, there's nothing to explain there. So assume that, which we justify. If B points in this direction, when I go B dot DL, I get BA. I get nothing from here. If now B points in this direction, I get another BA. BA plus BA, two BA. And mu times the current flowing out. Current flowing out 
is k times the length. Uh, remember? So k times l is the current flowing out. And that's how that works. Now, what's the only question that's remaining? Which way is b pointing? You work around that, and you can see that it points, <laughs> points in the, these are bunches of wires where the magnetic field is in. You can do that. Or you could just set it up in this direction, and you dot it with y hat above, and you'll see that it's pointing above on the left, towards the left. Actually, that doesn't even matter. All you have to realize is above and below, it is pointing in the opposite direction. That's all you need to worry about. The fact that B above is positive just follows from that. Are we good? Work it through, though, huh? Remember, K is in the X hat direction. So B above and B below should have the opposite direction, the y, com the, X, the y component. Make sure you carry that through. The next problem I want to do is also a problem from the next example, they are all great examples. You have seen, you've seen the amp, you've seen Ampere's law in physics too. You've seen this one too, solenoid. So I, I think it is uh, problem number five point, example five point nine. Here, I'll, I'll present one thing in detail, just cause. solenoid? Think, I mean, like, think winding of wires, right? I don't want to clutter the diagram, so I always draw a solenoid like this. Not that this is any better, right? Just a thick winding of wires. And this is my z-axis. And let n be the number of windings per unit length. just being a loop in that plane. So k is what? n times i phi hat. Correct? As a matter of fact, k is the source. And this is why I want to be pedantic with this example. It's not very difficult. So I'm going to put it as phi hat prime. It's a prime coordinate. It's a source, right? Fine. Can we guess some things? Is there a quick thing? I'm going to do this. It's not a symmetry argument, necessarily. 
Where did that come from? If I take any Amperian loop of constant S, there's no current flowing out. Simple as that. I, I don't care if it's inside or outside. If I do over here, there's no current flowing out. The current is in the loop here. If I pick this loop, same thing, current is flowing here. There's no current flowing out because K, yeah? saying that correctly. That doesn't sound completely legitimate. Yeah, yeah. It is true. You just make an apparent loop. What did I tell you? The winding is so tight that the current is going inside a loop. You can think of infinite loops stacked together. So that means B can be written as some BS, I'm using cylindrical coordinate system. Uh, gosh, the solenoid looks like an infinitely long cylinder. Plus, what is it? Uh, B phi, phi hat, we just concluded this is zero. B C, C hat. Then I'm going to do this. I'm just going to say the argument is the same argument if, let's say, it's pointing outward. That means if you stand upside down, it's pointing inward. That doesn't make sense. So the only thing that points outward and inward is a zero component. So now it remains to find out what BC is. And in this one, he just states, maybe Griffiths has a little more intuition. He says, as S approaches infinity, BC equal to zero. That seems very plausible if it's a finite solenoid. But this is an infinitely long solenoid. And I couldn't think of an immediate way. Moreover, it certainly approaches zero as you go very, very far away. It doesn't even say very, very, just very. With this in mind, so occasionally Griffith sticks one in, right? That makes you go, hmm. So this is not difficult. I wasn't convinced that I could convince you. So I just did a brute force calculation. Fun to watch. Let's do it. All right, so what I'm going to do First of all, I know this much. I know if the magnetic field here you know, has some magnitude, anywhere in that same distance away, it has the same magnitude because of symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my x, y, and z axis the usual way and compute my magnetic field somewhere over here, and then let it go infinitely far away. Because if it's zero as you go to as you go infinitely far away in the x axis, 
then it is zero if you go infinitely far away, anywhere between in the xy plane. Yeah? So infinitely far away, this would be zero. So what I did is I'm going to pick a particular point and compute bz over uh, at that point. In the limit, x goes to infinity. Now I have to integrate over all sources. So look at this. This is where you have to tell me if this is right. These are the sources. trying to locate any point here. The, on, in the xy, it is just a circle of radius r, and it's at some height z, and I have to integrate over the entire thing. OK. So then my uh, bz is equal to zero over four pi, and I, what is it, phi hat cross Computing only bz, so I dot that with c. Yeah. And then I'm going to make my life a little easier. Chip, you good? I I didn't do anything yet. I just wrote bits of odds law. So this is, you know what? Watch hold on. That's what it is. The DA came from, and then I went back to K, and then K becomes NI. Or, but that is the one, right? K is correct, NI. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't done anything. Because I need Z component, I just dotted it with Z. That's all. Yeah? Okay, well, tell you what, let's leave it as K for a little while. Let's compute this dot product. Before I compute this dot product, if I have to make something a unit vector, it's a little bit of trouble. So what do I do? Watch. Because this divided by one of the magnitude is a unit vector. This is scalar. Vector I don't have to find divided by the unit magnitude. Okay. Now, I'm going to use some, and I, I write this as, I'm looking at this term. Where did this come from? It's the uh, properties of triple product. You can change it, change it in the cyclic order. Remember, I have to change this around like this. I mean, like this goes here, this goes here, and this goes here. I can't change the order. Yeah, so that's. And OK, and so that is, um, I can do 
it this easy. And I think that's why I did that. Um, Z hat cross, I don't care if it is an I, well, let me just call it some magnitude, K in the phi hat direction. So that I can write it as minus K, and I'm copying this down. Z is a Cartesian unit vector, so it, it doesn't depend on location. Phi is not a Cartesian unit vector. So phi hat over here, it points this way. Over here, it points this way. But Z, everywhere it points the same way. So I, I can compute this very easy. I can compute, so what is Z hat? So. This is phi hat, this is z hat. So what is z hat cross phi hat? Minus s hat. Can we also do like the same cyclic? No, 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 I, so I didn't, do, I didn't do the cyclic anymore. So I just copied this down, and this Well, is so for the z cross phi, wouldn't that be, it's like x, y, x cross y, z, why would you want to? Why would you want to do it? Because z and phi, these are both cylindrical coordinate systems. You can't do that. So this isn't cylindrical. Well, like so, you know that the, the property where like if you cross x and y, you get z. Right. Cross right. Y and x, you get negative z. So you can't do that for yeah. this one. But you can't rotate through that. You, you are. You are. So if you have a I mean, that is what I'm effectively doing. Yeah. So if I, if I have my phi is this way, mm -hmm. and my z is this way, so then I do z cross phi, yeah. I get it yeah. as minus s. I just, in the spirit of identities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you like right. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, so, but I don't recall the order. Is it, uh, is it s phi z? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Then you make a combination. Yeah, it'll work out. OK. So then all I need is this guy. That's equal to minus k. I'm trying to make, make sure it's not a mistake. See, now I, this is not a unit vector. That's, the, that's my advantage. Dot s hat. That's minus k r dot s hat minus r prime dot here's my this is my r prime this is my r So r dot x s hat, how far am I going? x. But I need an s hat component. So look at this. x, y. Uh, this is my s hat. And this is my r hat. If I take the dot product, this is phi. But it, it is to this point, so it's a few prime. Well, this is easy. Gosh, I, well, I'll, I'll do the, the long part today and complete this tomorrow. But I did want to go through the calculation so that one can conclude things carefully. So then, my, I know I have inter erased everything, but then bz is mu0 ni over 4 pi. There's a minus. k, that is ni, 
Then I have We don't have to do any in integral. So I can take, I, I suppose I can do this. I can take the r and do it this way. x cosine phi hat. That's the numerator part. Remember my source that I'm integrating divided by the distance. This goes from 0 to 2 pi infinity to infinity and x minus r cosine phi prime squared plus r sine phi prime squared plus z prime squared to the three halves. It's that distance squared the three halves. There's only x coordinate for r. There's no y and z coordinate. It's it was one over r cubed, so that's why the three halves. I'm gonna. I can. I can. You know. So the whole problem was z is going from. There are charges from negative infinity to infinity. So how can you conclude that b z goes to zero? And here's the answer. I'm going to do the z integral. So this is easily done by Shom's outline, not by me. I, I look up tables now. That's what, what I do. Because see, that's that's the form, right? Z squared plus some constant. If I'm just doing the z integral, that's just two over d squared. Yeah? So that means this integral, when in integrated from negative infinity to infinity, is finite. Well, then you do a phi integral. Well, phi integral is only going from 0 to 2 pi, so it's finite. If you have finite integral, then take the limit inside the integral if the integral is finite. I have to show that the integral is finite. Now, I take this guy and let x go to infinity. Oh, I should say x prime, right? I have an x here, but I have an, no, it is x. It's where I'm measuring the field not the source. I have an x here, but I have an x squared to the 3 halves. That's x cubed. So these are x over x cubed. Goes to I couldn't have concluded that if this integral is not well defined. That, that is just a mathematical requirement. You can, it has to be well